Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me once again. Well today I thought we'd do a review of a kit um, that perhaps appeals to perhaps a, a much wider spectrum of potential model makers than usual because it's uh, the Tamiya, as you can see, the Tamiya Spitfire Mark 1 148 which came out about 18 months ago. In fact I liked it exactly two years ago, in fact November two years ago. Um, now this kit is is interesting because it's uh, you could argue it's a long overdue updating of Tamiya's 1994 I think it was 95 kit, um, but it has been done using all their latest techniques and uh, model engineering know-how. But in in doing that, they've actually brought something new to the party. It has a new appeal I think because it appeals to very experienced modellers who can modify it, they can weather it, they can do all sorts of amazing tricks and use their skills on it. Because the fundamental kit is so good, it's so well engineered, it belongs in that top echelon of kits really, um, from Tamiya I'm talking about. Um, when I say top echelon I'm talking about that uh, Tomcat F14 148 we talked about recently and also earlier in the year the 148th Messerschmitt BF109G6 uh, and the Tomcat came first then the Messerschmitt and then and then this this is the latest one and they are just so wonderful the way that they go together the precision of the joins of the engineering the um, micromanagement of the way that the parts actually fit together so so beautiful it's state of the art and this is what Tamiya based their reputation on. So I mentioned about the, the sort of better modelers and more experienced modelers but if you're, if you're relatively new to modeling and you feel a bit intimidated by all these techniques about rescribing and re-riveting and sanding and filling and, and you're just thinking I just want to build a simple model that's detailed that goes together really well then you have found your model. Everybody loves a Spitfire and this really does appeal to this massively wide audience. It's it's what you want it to be. If you don't want to paint it even, you could kind of get away with it. You've still got a really clean, sharp looking Spitfire, even if it was left unpainted. I'm not suggesting you do that. But even the most basic paint job and it will look fantastic. Because all the fundamentals are right, the moulding's right, the finishing, the, the fit, it's all there. So Let's talk about some of the people that, I've had people contacting me that are viewers on the site and subscribers, um, people that are uh, newcomers, people that are returning to the modelling hobby um, and have not made a model in recent years and you know 20 or 30 years out of touch or more. It's perfect for these people because this is going to look great even if you, even if you don't give it 100% and if you're not not quite at the top of your game in terms of skill set, it's still going to look good. So, things to remember. To make this model, you only need three things. You need some nice sprue cutters. I prefer the display ones, but there are other wonderful ones on the market. We've got the Tamiya ones, which I also use. Uh, there's the gut, I've got the Tamiyas here, in fact. There they are, the black and silver ones. There's the God Hand. Uh, you may need to take out a second mortgage because they are very, very expensive. Um, so I've not got not got around to buying those yet, but I'm sure one day I probably will. Then you need some glue. And you can use Tamiya's regular glue, you can use the Revel, you know, the contactor from Revel, which is fine. But the nice, again, when you get a model that's this well engineered, the very very thin glues like the uh, extra thin actually this is the quick setting one so i've actually probably got the wrong one here we've got the regular extra thin and the quick setting extra thin the regular is probably absolutely fine for this kit that's worth investing in uh, you can build this kit just with this nothing else is needed apart from a scalpel so a little bit of scraping a little bit of cutting just trimming up here and there and then finally, maybe get yourself a, a couple of nice sanding sticks. This is from a very well-known site. They're excellent and others are available. With those four tools, you're going to be able to build a brilliant Spitfire. So let's get straight into it. What we got then? 
we've got this model, it came out, as I say, two years ago exactly, and it's a beautiful sort of reworking of a classic. So let's get you in nice and close so you can see what we're talking about here. Okay, lovely artwork on the front. This is the uh, uh, 610 County of Chester Squadron that's actually depicted on the cover, the DW reference on it. Um, on the side, we've got, as you can see, this is the example from uh, 65 Squadron, which is, I think, this particular one is Stanford Tuck's aircraft. It was a World War II fighter race, and I think this was his first Spitfire. And then we've got some blurb, including some interesting things that are perhaps a little bit different from what people are used to. So some photo etch. Again, if you're a beginner or a, a returnee to the hobby, this will be relatively new to you. So it's uh, a very thin sheet metal that's been etched to give this beautiful figuring and adds a sort of a, an additional layer of realism. And then there's also some beautiful like metallic decals which form things like the uh, surround on the windows. So in the canopy there's like a little slidable window and this gives that surround a little bit more realism effect. On the other side, this is an interesting aircraft, this is the QV uh, registration letters on it. So this is the aircraft from uh, 19 Squadron and this is from Operation Dynamo which is the evacuation of Dunkirk. And it was this aircraft that was kind of um, uh, copied in a way by the uh, the Tom Hardy character who crash lands on the beach in the Dunkirk movie, I've got to say. Uh, and it ended up, this real aircraft was ended up um, buried in the sand for many, many years. It was dug out in the 1980s uh, of the beach at Dunkirk and was a bit of, in a bit of a sorry state. It was completely restored. And is now flying today. It's got this famous, you can't miss it, QV, no other letters. And it's got this black, half black wing, half sky blue underside. So it's divided half and half. Very strange scheme, I have to say, but uh, it wasn't uncommon in 1940. That's still now flying, having been 100% restored. It was also featured in the Guy Martin Spitfire series on Channel 4 on British television. Totally restored. Flies out of the historic air um, historic air I can't remember the name of the company but the historic restoration company at Duxford near Cambridge in England and then there's a close up showing some of the lovely detail you can get there. Anyway, without further ado we're going to crack into the a proper look at the box and its contents. So let's get cracking now. Ah, uh, uh, there's a problem. There's a problem. I have a confession to make. I've actually started this kit already some months ago. Uh, sort of in tune for the sort of Battle of Britain anniversary. Never quite got around to finishing it. Don't worry, it's only just started. I mean, I've done like five percent of the kit. The rest is untouched. So, but bear with me. You'll see some areas that are painted. Um, but in a way, that might be quite interesting and helpful for people to view, especially if they're new to the spit. Let's have a look. Here we go. So, pop that over there. Let's see if we can just use our knife to melt it nicely. There we go. Uh, pop it into the background like so. And then we have quite an interesting set. And you can see I say I started it. I mean, that's putting it. Well, this is probably mildly. No, it's it's just the basics. I think I've assembled three pieces. So let's just take them out first and get that out of the way. So what I've done, I've got the actual um, just the two fuse large halves only, and I've just assembled quite an interesting section. You'll see this when we get into the instructions in a moment. So there's a section here. There's a whole section from here to here where you've got the option of having the canopy open or the canopy closed. So I've gone for the canopy. Uh, canopy open option with the door open and you can see that I've got uh, these areas where we've got some um, cockpit green already sprayed up uh, but apart from that it's untouched but we'll come back to that in a second let's see what's in the box now I've got to say we're looking at one of the premium bits of its type really you know and this costs about 30 pounds about 50 dollars US uh, probably about 38, 36 euros, something like that. Um, so we've got 
a really nice decal set. I'm not going to open the decals because they're... Well, I, no, no, we will open them. Just for you, we'll open them, okay? Because I'm going to be building this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. A knife on it might help us. I'm struggling. It's very... Some of these kits, I noticed they've got very tight packaging. It makes it really hard to open it cleanly. Okay, so let's, let's take a proper look at this. Decals first. And we've also got, I think it's a mask kit, and there's this framing I talked about. So, let's bring you in. So this is the mask kit. Okay. So, this is the masks for the canopy, and this is this little framing set for this little, um, Parts where, for example, there's the little opening section of the canopy where the pilot can slide open a little bit of a, a vent window. Beautifully recreated by Tamiya. That's really nice, I've got to say. Then we've got our decals. This is the first time I've had them out ever. So you're seeing this first time. There we go. Now then. So we've got this uh, 610 City of Chester squadron markings here. Got the Stanford Tuck 65 Squadron here. Mm, I think we said it was 9 Squadron, didn't we, for this QV, the QV, the Operation Dynamo. Um, but there's a real attention to detail gone into this, which you probably haven't seen before. Look at these underside roundels. They've got little cutouts for where you've got um, various protrusions in the bodywork so it doesn't have to try and conform. They're actually, they're actually cut out, and they are, just checking, they are actually, you know, open there. So that's really, really good. That gives you a little bit less work to do, but you've got some really nice decals. Now, Tamiya decals are kind of known for being a little bit on the thick side and can be a little bit difficult to get them conforming. I'm told, though, that these are very, very nice, and they are perhaps a little bit of a step forward for them. Uh, lots of stencils, but not too many. Not too many here. All the typical ones you'd expect to see on the Spitfire. They look really nice for Tamiya, I've got to say. I've no idea why they're given this sheet that's oversized, but anyway, you put that back over there. In fact, you can just pop it back in its, in its bag. It's nice and safe like that. I don't worry about that too much. So, then we have a rather nice info sheet showing the aircraft. It's all in Japanese on this side, but we've got a diagram showing the main points, and there's lots of photographs here. Interestingly, from the RAF Cosford Museum, which I live very nearby actually, not far away anyway. Here it is. Showing the gun sight, showing the canopy and the way it opens, showing the, the wings. And then we've got the English version of this uh, bit of data I've just shown you. Here we go. There we are. So there's all the main points of interest, including the instrumentation. Uh, and this is all now in English on this side, so that's good. And then we've got the intakes and the radiators. So quite a useful information sheet, it's got to be said. And uh, the sort of thing you normally get on 48 scale kits, in honest. Then we get this most beautiful colour fallout sheet, which is really, really nice. Let's take a look at that. Look at this, it's absolutely stunning. So it's like Super Moon Spitfire Mark 1, and you see all the colours depicted accurately, showing the stencils as well, and clear idea of how to position everything, including these rather tricky canopy decals here, which is really, really helpful. And then if we turn it over on the other side, we've got the other two options. So we've got the Stanford Tuck option, uh, 65 Squadron, which I think was based at Duxford actually. And you can see how they have different colours, different markings with a registration number underneath, which was dropped later. 
and then we've got the QV Spitfire, the Operation Dynamo Spitfire that was uh, ultimately lost at Dunkirk. Uh, sadly crash landing and then rotting away on the beach, only to be recovered in the late 80s. Uh, and you see this uh, half black, half white design. It's a beautiful thing, this, you know, really nice for a 48 scale kit at this price. To have that included is really, really nice. So, let's have a look at the instructions. Nice, um, very slightly unusual shape. It's very narrow and tall, a bit more so than normal Sammy has. They're normally a bit more A4 than this. Then it comes in and it starts off showing you the three options you've got in terms of markings and then we get straight into it, reminding you there's two options here of open or closed canopy and that you need to therefore accordingly do the interior section, this open section there's two options and you must think about this before you start the assembly then we've got all the fine detailed parts of the instrumentation and control surfaces within the cockpit now I've got to say to you that I, exactly a year ago in fact I was working on the 30 second scale Spitfire from Tamiyar which was just amazing, brilliant kit. But this is so like it, it's just a little scaled down version of it. And it's got all that same detail is retained and it looks like a deja vu for me, I've got to say, which is a, a real uh, impressive way that they've gone about it to do that on what is a very basic early Spitfire. Everything's there, you've got all the switch gear and the controls and the throttles, trim wheels, you know, here, trim wheels. And you've got your uh, oxygen bottles and you've got your brake and all this other stuff. Fabulous stuff. The pedals, you know, with the, uh, the rudder pedals and the straps. Absolutely amazing that they've done that. It's, uh, this is the compass. Just wonderful, wonderful. And then over here we've got the instrumentation, again, very similar to the 30 second, just a scaled down version of it. Then you're assembling in your, uh, your front bulkhead with your controlled yoke, including the, where the guns are on the yoke. And then here you've got your uh, rear bulkhead just behind the, passenger, uh, the pilot's seat, I should say. Uh, and then you've got these lap belts going in. And then, again, depending on where the canopy's open or closed because it, the fit is different you've got all these parts that add up to the bulkhead behind uh, the oxygen bottles and then finally putting in your seat belts if you have the pilot however which is quite a nice pilot I think we're seeing it again you've got different options again so again you've got to decide canopy open or closed pilot in or out these are the options that you have and then if he's out you have your seat belts just draped and the photo etch seat belt, so that's quite an impressive addition. And then you get your sort of tub of the uh, cockpit here, and then you bring it all together with your two halves of the fuselage. And then here we've got the exhaust stubs being added. Um, they do have a slightly strange thing, and they have this little lip piece on the top front of the uh, engine cowling. I don't know why they've done that, that's a little bit odd, but uh, I'm sure with Tamiya's legendary fit it won't be a problem. Then you've got your exhaust stubs, your tail planes go on, they seem to be in a little bit of a... F it's quite clever, they've got this fixed uh, plinth that the uh, the outer surfaces sit on so it cannot be put on at the wrong dihedral anhedral to make the levelling right. Then you've got your rudder and your tail wheel going on. And then we get into the, the meat and potatoes of the actual wings themselves. A um, little bit of spraying to do, you've got wheel wells to prepare uh, with the paint, uh, cockpit green. And then we have the landing uh, gear bays. Which are all assembled in this rather impressive way. And then they and the guns go into the wing, which has got little gun stops, which is nice brand new machine guns and then you bring the top wing and the bottom wing together add in your uh, ailerons and your wing tips and then you bring ultimately bring this wing up to mate up with the fuselage now note the way that it mates up at the back of its fixing first then clips in at the front 
and everybody says that's made this that this is like a click fit with no gaps and joins it's just seamless really really nice and then we move on to the radiators and intakes so you've got your main underwing radiators and you've got your your chin uh, there just under the, the where the engine would be and then your main landing gear and this is another clever innovation that Tamiya have done uh, where it's this fixed uh, pre-positioned so you can't make a mistake and get the angles wrong it just goes in as one piece one unit and then you cover up with these panels underneath which means that your angle of your main gear undercarriage will always be spot on and then finally you put your little gear doors on and then front intake and then canopy masking as you would expect uh, to make the uh, precision framing of the canopy canopy goes on and you've got this option of canopy open canopy closed and you then bring this to fruition with your uh, cockpit door open or cockpit door closed finally onto the last section where we just have the can uh, propeller spinner um, the rotol spinner and the propeller and then the, the aerials all go on as the final install uh, with your pitot heads and uh, these little uh, final pieces like this uh, sliding section on the canopy window side and that's really it then we've got lots and lots of stencils to go on but there's not that many actually it's quite sensibly done in fairness not OTT and then a few on the sides as well just to complete the build and that's the end so I have to say um, there are some things in this that they've copied over a little bit from their design on the Messerschmitt 109 BF 109 G6 um, they didn't go to quite the lengths on that which is why this kit's a little bit cheaper I think it's about five pounds cheaper on that kit you've got an engine which was uh, really animated and they've got opening um, covers and cowlings brilliant I've got to say really enjoyed making that I built that one start of this year definitely my favorite build of the year it's one of a few builds of the year but uh, perhaps of the last five years it was one of my favorites so let's have a look at the parts anyway now bear in mind some of these have been worked on a little bit so bear with me starting with this sprue which you can see has already been well worked on because frankly as we know the main sections which is the uh, the fuselage have already gone now if you just bear with me while I just spin this around we need to have a good background so we can photograph it now then what you're seeing here is the alternative uh, closed canopy closed door uh, effect uh, which I haven't used I've, I've used this one that's already open so for example if you put them side by side you can see there the two options the one I've used for the open and the one that's for the closed and likewise on this side you've got the same thing here closed here open here so and you can see that the seamlessness of this look carefully now going back to this uh, bit I've just begun working on can you see how nicely that fits and how there's no filler no filler here it's just adhesive and it's just pretty much seamless it's beautiful but back to the uh, sprue so what have we got on it we've got the wheel wells we've got this have a fixed undercarriage angle of attack so we can't get that wrong then there is the gear doors main doors for the landing gear and we've got the covers here covers for that fixed piece that's the uh, angles of landing gear correctly so all in all very nice very nice and of course there's no flash on any of this there is no flash whatsoever any of these parts absolutely pristine perfect moulding as Tamiya are famous for how about some clear parts let's look at them 
let's have a look at the clips. So, here we go. Canopy. You can clearly see the clarity of this. Very, very, very nice. Absolutely sharp as you like. There's no distortion. So you've got the, um, the closed option here, or the open option here. In which case the parts are separate. And then you've got, there's actually two screens, which I'm not, not too sure why that is. I think there's going to be a later version that will be issued of this, probably Mark V. You can see there's two versions. One's got a little reflector mirror. This one's got a big one. See that? And then you've got all the two little uh, lights and things that are included. But that's beautiful clear parts. They're really pristine. They're no distortion. There's no sort of impurities or scratches or anything nasty like that. Absolutely brilliant. Then we've got the sprue that's got all the ancillary parts and the tail planes and things on it. So let's have a look at that. There we go. Now then. see here some very very impressive stuff so we've got, we've got the pilot here he is he's nice and sharp looks really crisp to be honest we've got the rudder Then we've got tail planes and the wing tips. And these tail planes are interesting because then you've got this, uh, you've got this sort of tail plane there, and when you turn it around, you can see that its elevators are separate at the back. And the idea of this is to slot it in without having any issue about its its location or its angle. It gives you absolute perfect angle every time. Then we've got, this is the parts where I can see I've been already started with the spraying. We've got the cockpit green been sprayed on the little bulkheads. And some of the parts in the cockpit, things like the, the sliders, on which the seat mounts here. And um, where the pedals for the rudders are mounted. And you've got oxygen bottles, you've got instrumentation and bulkheads. And then you've also got your seat here, which is, uh, if you look, it's sp spread it green at the bottom, but then the upper seat, the back of the seat, is actually red leather, brown leather. So that will be uh, amended later. And on this side, you've got, this is the wheel well area where this uh, predetermined undercarriage leg system goes in. And then you've got, finally, you've got your wheels, tyres I should say, and then you've got your tail wheel and your actual wheel inserts themselves. So it's a really nice sprue, it's really well figured and again, you know, there's no flash, it's absolute perfection really. It's just faultless to look at, so nothing to see here, nothing to criticise here. Beautiful. And then, just a couple left, we've got the, the chin area, so this is the um, chin that goes under the engine, uh, cowling, under the side, beneath the engine, and then right behind that is this little air intake and the little lip, which is even moulded in this curiously sh shaped sprue, which is very, very good. And then last but not least, oh sorry, there's a piece off the sprue here which I've painted. So this is the tub in which the pilot's seat sits. 
all preformed and again beautifully moulded, just faultlessly done, yeah. And then the very final one is the main wing sprue. So obviously we've got things like the top of our wing, we have got ailerons. Here they are. And they are really, really nicely moulded. Beautifully figured. You've got the stretch effect over the little spars on the other side. It's the same. Really, really nice. Perfection, really. And then, same with the the main lower wing. I mean, look at the look at the detail on this. Absolutely stunning. And some very, very fine panel lining detail work. Really, really astonishing. Look at that. Brilliant. And the top wing, very similar. Here we go. Let's bring it back a bit. I think my focus is struggling a little bit. There we are. Look at the fineness of this panel lines and the uh, the gun port covers. Just, just beautiful. Absolutely stunning. And then, uh, last but not least, we've got the Rotol propeller spinner and the Rotol propeller itself. Here we've got the um, surround to the wheel wells. A bit of the instrument panel here and then the radiators underneath here and not to forget the exhaust stubs here so there we have it um, it has to be has to be said this is quite an impressive kit um, kind of putting it mildly really. I mean it's about £30 and you could probably pick it up for about £28-£29 now but you're not going to find another Spitfire at the scale that comes even close. Yes I've heard all the story about Edward and how wonderful they are blah 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 blah. No. I've seen people assembling this. I've watched videos of them building it. The thing clicks together. You don't need to use glue to fit the wings for example. A bit of a recurrence of this Tomcat uh, story I told when I did the final countdown video. It's the same sort of engineering, the same quality of plastic, the same precision, minute precision of the parts and the consistent gap lines which are almost nil. But it just smoothly clicks together. Flush, precise, beautiful. They've got the shape right this time, which on the previous version in the 90s wasn't quite right around the front end. I've got a couple of those and they just don't look quite right. So um, I have to say in summary that this is, I, I think I'm going to go further than normal. I said that the Tomcat was 9 out of 10, I think this is 9.5. Perhaps if they'd got a little bit more, um, you know, if they'd gone all the whole hog and got the engine opening up like they did on the Meshlet 109 then it would have been a 10 out of 10 if we could have had a Merlin in there as well. So a whole bike, let's say 9 out of 10, I think that's fair. Um, but really, you know, it's an absolute bobby dazzler for the money. If you, I say again, if you're a beginner or if you're returning to the hobby, you should make a beeline for this model because you're just not going to be challenged by it. If you are patient, if you cut it off the sprue cleanly, clean it up with a bit of a swipe of a sanding stick or a little scrape with your knife, that's the only work you're going to need to do. It's going to just fall together beautifully. Another, what they call it, shake and bake, you know, put the glue in the box, put some paints in there, shake it, perfect spit of that at the end. <laughs> okay, it's a bit more complicated than that, but it's a winner. It's a winner. You won't find anything else better for the money. You buy this, you're never going to think, oh, it wasn't that good. It is that good. You're going to enjoy building it, and you'll be sorry when it's done. So, there we go. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. So it's a 9 out of 10 from me, I think. 
which is as good as it gets at 48 scale. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you found it interesting, please like, share and subscribe. And please bear in mind that um, we have lots of other videos coming up soon. We're waiting for a, a couple of big ones from Airfix in New Year time. Really long awaited, a Buccaneer and a Vulcan, which should be fantastic. So please keep watching the channel, keep subscribing if you haven't already. And in the meantime, thanks for watching. Hope you found it interesting. And I really hope to see from you all again soon. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Thanks a lot. And bye for now.